Welcome back everybody. Today we got a fun one for you. It's a city lot project, a lot of renovation going on, ripping out all sorts of old stuff, putting in all sorts of new stuff, a chance to look at all sorts of different tractor attachments in use on a John Deere 1025R, and I've got nothing to do with it. As always, we're proud to be sponsored by Bora Wheel Spacers. If you're looking for a stability solution for your tractor, check out Bora, made in America and a lifetime warranty. Hey, and if you found this video enjoyable or maybe informative, hit that like button, subscribe to see more tractor videos, and if you want something for your machine, maybe something shown in this video, check out goodworkstractors.com. I'm sure a lot of you have seen Paul around the shop. Well, his son Nate, which they're old family friends, lifetime long family friends, uh, had a renovation project going over in Metro Detroit area. And so Chris and Paul loaded up everything, a whole trailer load of tractors and attachments, and took it over there to knock some stuff out over Labor Day weekend. So this will be a good opportunity to see how this tractor does with all sorts of different tools, a lot of you probably have small projects going on like this, so I'm excited to watch it for the first time along with you. I am Nate Johnson in Royal Oak, Michigan. We are standing in front of my house, which looks like absolute garbage, and we're hoping to change that this weekend. We're revamping the entire yard, so we've killed the grass already. Uh, we're going to be doing some rototilling of the lawn to kind of level it out for new seed. Also using the dethatcher, and we're digging some trenches for new electrical conduit from my house to my detached garage. Uh, we're pulling a bunch of uh, fence posts from an existing chain link fence, and then using an auger to uh, install some new 4x4 wood posts for a new wood fence. We're also going to be putting some stone in, so we've got some egg rock going in one location, and then I have a city alley behind me that we're going to put some of the limestone 6a uh, down on the ground to, to reinforce that a bit as it's just soil right now. So I'm also getting some new concrete work done for the driveway and then the front sidewalk along with the concrete stoops. So we're going to be using the tractor to remove the concrete flags uh, and, and stage them until the concrete guy comes in a couple weeks to do the rest of the work. So I have a lot of overgrown bushes and trees that I've trimmed up. This is the last one that needs to be trimmed and we're going to be using the tractor with the stump remover to tear out some of those things along with a couple tree stumps in the backyard. We're on the west side of my house between my house on the right and my neighbor's house. We're going to be putting that egg rock right here in the, the gap between my neighbor's driveway and my house. It's no maintenance, it's always shade, not much is going to grow back here with other than ground cover but I get a lot of leaves, uh, there's a, bit, a lot of big oak trees in the area so I kind of just wanted something easy here to to install and manage the leaves better in the fall, so egg rock was the, the recommended approach. This is one of the existing lines of chain link fence that we're pulling out with all these posts that we'll be using the tractor to pull out with uh, the existing chain link on the ground that we've already torn off. So new wood fence is going to go there, so that's where we're going to be using the auger to dig some post holes for the new wood fence. Wood fence spacing is going to be about five foot on, on center, while the, the chain link's about eight foot.
of the job, get more safety goggles like Courtney usually does. It's a rookie here. So we started the trench at the house, moving towards the garage, and then we turned the tractor around a little past halfway and started digging the trench from the garage towards the house. We likely could have just driven the tractor over the trench and straddled it and finished the trench with the backhoe, but in case we got stuck or collapsed the trench, we pulled the tractor out and just finished the section between the two um, trenches that we started with the bucket breaking through the turf roots with the bucket and the tooth bar, and then Nate just dug the rest of it by hand. This is not to code. Double thumbs up. I think it's an inch and a half that it goes into the female end. Conduit's in about 40 linear feet of conduit. Probably took us an hour to dig the trench, I'd say maybe two hours. Next goal is we're gonna start taking all the pipes out posts, fence posts. It is three o'clock, so it probably took us a little longer, two and a half hours, two hours. We ate lunch late, so yeah, two hours. Two hours to dig the trench and lay the PVC, weight it down, and then we'll fill it back in with the, the tractor later once we do some more groundwork. Maybe back off a little. It's right there. Just go back three inches. Go back down. Go back forward. Yeah. Not do that again. No, keep doing that. It's real large. Back three inches. Right there. Now drive and go. Straighten it off a little bit and then drive. Yeah, there you go. Now back a little bit. Too steep. Five again. Yeah, there you go. That's it. That's, That's it. it. That's now back a couple more times. Yep, now down and drive forward. Yeah. Now to go forward, yeah. 
Drive down, now drive forward. There it is. I think, I think you just got it right there. Yeah, you did. Yep, it's coming, it's coming. Yep, keep going. There it is. All right, set it down. That's good. Just straight forward, a little bit that way. Paul Johnson up to bat right now. Swing contact. Two seat contact hitter. I'd say like a 275. Could make a couple mil in the MLB. So we recognize that we're not the most efficient first time users with this tractor or with this stunt bucket. But the, the reality is we're not sweating because the tractor is doing most of the work. So you kind of search out for the smaller roots. When you get to a big one, you might got to get your axe out or a chainsaw or a sawzall. Um, but really, the tractor does most of it. Then, as you probably noticed, we're not in four-wheel drive, and that was just a big mistake. And we don't fix that until day three. That's what I thought. Yep, keep going. Yep, it's working, Dad. Yep, lift up now. There you go, pull back. Okay, you're good. Nate had pre-soaked a lot of the posts to try and loosen the soil so the concrete would give easier. Um, some over on this side he hadn't yet, so we quickly soaked them. We tried to lift a lot with the front end loader, but did find that the three point, though it obviously has way smaller range of motion, does have far more lifting capacity. And it's just a lot about getting your chain, keeping your chain snug, it'll you know slip and pull sometimes. But, um, I mean, again, it's way easier to just reset a chain and that dig by hand. Another successful use of the tractor.
eight o'clock on Saturday and we just finished up pulling all the posts. So there were about two dozen metal posts and concrete. And then we took out all of the bushes and tree stumps. And then we also helped the neighbor, John, pull out some of his bushes and tree stumps. Day two, Sunday morning, roughly 8.30 a.m. Uh, Dad and I are gonna start um, setting corner posts and laying out our spacing for all our posts. And then we're gonna be uh, continue, continuing some of the demolition stuff in the front yard. Got the sidewalk to take out and one last bush to pull. Um, and then start rototilling the front yard, hopefully today as well. Uh, we'll also try to be tackling the, the parking spot in the back and maybe moving some of the, the 6A limestone to the alley to start putting down to, to clear up the driveway. Um, and so we have to, to cut out some of the dirt in that back parking spot, put some uh, felt fabric down, and then put some limestone on top of that, build up like a three inch base. That's about it. So we use a nine inch auger that was really pretty simple to use. You just put the tip exactly where you want it and uh, make sure you're plumb. And you might need to drive slightly forward or backwards while going down to achieve that plumb. But other than that, we just dug as deep as it would go because we have 42 inch frost line here in Michigan. And even though the auger is about 42 yep. inches, it leaves a little bit of loose soil in the bottom. So keep your post hole diggers handy to pull that loose soil out. Yep. But really, Nate and Paul made short work of it once they got a few under their belt. They're putting two bags of concrete in there? Probably. Rototilling ended up being pretty straightforward. We hit some unseen objects. I think that's gonna happen no matter where you're at. Landscaping pavers probably from the previous owner that were buried. I made sure to stop well before the city sidewalk so we didn't chip that. Um, it doesn't look like it, but it was fairly uneven ground. I was actually quite happy to have the wheel spacers because when you were tipped over, um, you were probably at a 14 to 16 inch differential riding one tire to the other at the worst. I'd say it was a fairly easy process. I just kept my heads up in case it did fling something towards a pedestrian or a car driving by. And I gotta say I had the easy job while Paul and Nate kept on with manual labor. Lucky me.
driven the 1025 a handful of times as we've made videos, but I guess it didn't register to me until this part of the process when you know scooping up rock from the pile and then dumping it that the joystick only works in one direction at a time you can't curl or roll and raise and lower the loader at the same time and that's a bit frustrating but it definitely slows you down now it's not the end of the world by any means but i just consistently felt myself trying to run the joystick at an angle to catch both functions but could not do that it's end of day two it's about eight o'clock and we just we're finished up putting some of the limestone 6a in my new backyard parking spot off the alley uh, as you can see we got all the fence posts in um, fence boards will come later and we'll cut off the tops to make them all level about a four foot fence so the front yard we took out the sidewalk demoed the the concrete sidewalk going from the, the city sidewalk to the front door uh, then we started to rototill up there did a pass a couple passes over the rototill and some leveling uh, filling in where the sidewalk was demoed and some other low spots and we had some high spots so some cut and fill up front. Uh, so finish up the rest of the limestone tomorrow. Um, some rototilling like I said and that's about it. And Nate's about to make burgers so Fresh I'm pretty burgers. happy for that. Yeah. It's a wrap. See you tomorrow. Day three. Monday. Later.
really there were two reasons I wanted to till everything again. The first was I wasn't satisfied with how level everything was, so the looser we could get the top few inches of dirt, the easier it would be to level everything out or grade it away from the house or any points that we wanted to grade away from. The second reason was because I wanted to break up the sod clumps as much as possible since Nate is going to be replanting grass and I didn't want anything to be inhibiting that growth. And as you'll see, we did run over with the dethatcher, which would pull those clumps out, or at least most of them, but I just thought it'd be best practice to double till. All right, day three is a wrap. That's Monday, Labor Day. So today we rototilled, we dethatched and leveled the whole yard essentially, ready for uh, seeding now, grass seed. Uh, we also um, laid the egg rock on the other side uh, of the yard. So that took a little bit of time scraping out some soil. So we put down the felt fabric and that took a little bit of time and then put the egg rock into place. Egg rock was a little harder to move with a rake uh, much harder to shovel um, and that's pretty much it I think uh, overall pretty happy uh, yesterday about midday we didn't think we were really gonna make it but we busted through and pretty much accomplished everything we wanted to this all was done because uh, Courtney Scott thank you Courtney and all your work and uh, for good works tractors looking forward to the video on YouTube you had some good insights to take away from that video there if you did enjoy it i'd love to get a thumbs up from you make sure you do hit that subscribe button to see more and if you want something for your tractor check out goodworkstractors.com thanks again for taking the time to stop by and until next time stay safe we'll see you soon